It finishes 1-0 right now. Now we go to Stamford Bridge to see how things turn out. We've got to welcome in Frank LaBeouf as well. He had plenty to say to me ahead of the game today. I wonder what he's got to say about Chelsea's performance after the game. Oh, you know what, Kay? I think I texted you that uh, you, you, do we, you're going to win 1-0, but you're going to lose 3-0 uh, the second time. We'll see. But uh, I want to congratulate the Borough players because they did what they had to do. They were fighting a lot. Michael Carrick um, prepared this team very well. But Chelsea, come on, come on. I mean, uh, you try to be contrast, contrast, contrastive about what you want to say, uh, you know, about that game, about, uh, you know, maybe being positive about something. But there is nothing that we can say. Let's say that if I were Thiago Silva or Di Sazi and I'm at the back, I don't know. I will go to the coach. I will say, coach, when we have the ball, what can we do? Because we know that they're going to lose it and we're not going to score any goal. Because they're not creating anything. We don't have at front somebody who can do something different. In the middle of the park, we have nobody who can change something and, and outnumber the, uh, the opponent. There is nothing I can see we can improve Chelsea uh, uh, playing that way. Um, they have to change everything. But I think they have to change many players first and maybe see if they can do something. And it's not possible. So they're going to struggle again. And I said that many times for years because of the way they, they, they built the team. There is nothing. Everything is it's, um, uh, it's easy to read. Uh, it's predictable. You have nothing to surprise the opponent. Crazy. But they do have the tie coming back to Stamford Bridge now to see it out against a team that are a tier below them. Chelsea will probably go through uh, in all probabilities. Uh, maybe not, but I, I would imagine so. But at least the tie is... At least Borough have something to take to London tangible, which is great for them. But it's... Quite an achievement, this, from this football club. Continuously, continuously to spend as much as they have and be as bad as they are. It's quite a feat, that, actually. You know, Man United and Chelsea are, are, are an amazing couple of clubs <laughs> at the moment, uh, outspending almost everybody to be absolutely crap. I mean, that is quite a feat. You want to, I think we should give them some sort of medal for that. I mean, Moises Caicedo, right, at Brighton, looked like £100 million. Pound player, dollar, whatever currency you want, I don't care. Uh, he was a player. <laughs> he was a right player at Brighton, he was. Arsenal wanted him. Chelsea, Liverpool wanted him. Chelsea got him. Should have went to Liverpool or Arsenal, not Chelsea. It's a different story. Uh, he's made the wrong move at this moment in time. No sign of that changing. Enzo Fernandez, great World Cup. Ah, open the checkbook. We've seen what we've seen from Enzo Fernandez. £200 million and they can't dominate a game against Middlesbrough, particularly for the first 45 minutes. You know, it's just a mess. 88 million, Mihaila Mudric. Because Arsenal were looking at him. He can't cross the ball. He can run, he could, I tell you what, he could probably, he could probably beat 99.9% .9 of the planet over 100 metres. But there's a little white round thing that rolls around that you got it at some point either put it in the back of the net or put, put a decent cross in. He can't do that. I mean, it's brilliant. It is utterly brilliant. But, and, 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 <laughs> yeah, and, and for all those reasons, Middlesbrough, plucky old Middlesbrough, struggling away in the Championship, haven't got a bean to their name, really, when it comes to spending money these and missing days. loads of players themselves. Correct. And they've given themselves a great opportunity. That tells you all you need to know about and this is not a one-off from Chelsea. Come on, we saw it, we saw it for long periods of the Preston game at the weekend. We saw it against little old Luton at Kenilworth Road. You know they did they were three goals up, three one, hanging on at the end. Crystal Palace looking to sack Roy Hodgson under pressure at Stamford Bridge outplayed Chelsea, outplayed them. So this is not something new. This is embarrassing. That will probably be a turnaround. They can thank the lucky stars. It's not 2025, because in 2025, the Carabao Cup semi-finals are one leg, right? It's, they're changing it, and for, for the good. Chelsea can thank the lucky stars that they're not, it's not next year, and they have an opportunity to put right a 
another disastrous 45 minutes. But, but this just kind of leans into the conversation that we were having before the game, and Nedham was talking about Jules' criticism of, of Chelsea, um, not really sure what they're trying to do, and um, stylistically, no, no identity, but they got results uh, against Preston. They got a result against Preston. And, and, you know, while you celebrate that for what it is, while Chelsea may very well go back to Stamford Bridge and turn this around and all of a sudden they're 90 minutes away from, from silverware, finals take care of themselves. Um, you, you look at this performance and it, 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 it really leaves you scratching your head as to who Chelsea are, what, what they're trying to be, more, more to the point. Um, very light up front, a non-existent midfield. And, and a defence that, that's left overly exposed against lower league, mid-table lower league opposition at that. So for all the money that's spent, um, for all the suggested direction that Chelsea are, are aiming for, it, it's, it's, it's hard to identify. Nader Manua, pitch side at the Riverside Forest tonight. What to make of what we saw from Chelsea, Nader? Um, to be honest, in that first half, obviously they got hit with that goal and they conceded one or two chances. But I look back and I saw the chances that Chelsea had, especially in Cole Palmer. And even though the performance wasn't great, you know, they still had the ability to create those chances and should have taken them. But then as, as the game wore on, especially in that second half, I think Middlesbrough, in fairness, they weren't... It's not that they were completely comfortable, but it seemed like Chelsea were running out of ideas as such. And even when they brought uh, Brozier on and they had Mudrick on there, in some ways, I was saying, like, wh when was the chance that they had from when they threw on their number nine? So I think it was just a case of them really struggling against, like, well, sorry, attacking against a low block. And I guess this is who they've been for the season. They're taking off players, bringing some on, trying to find some spark. But for their style of play, the tempo's not very high. They struggle to sort of break lines and be really dynamic. And as a consequence, teams can bet in against them. And you saw that today because as time was passing, you thought, well, maybe Burrow will make a mistake. Because at times it felt as if that was going to be the only way that Chelsea would score in that second half, which unfortunately says a lot about their season so far. What I would say about Cole Palmer, okay. what I would say about Cole Palmer is, is, is that two of those chances were, yeah. were were gifts from Middlesbrough, one from House and then one from the goalkeeper. Right. The shot and, and the third one, which was a weak finish, uh, that was actually a bit of good football, which is just before half time. Uh, so the others were kind of handed to him on the plate, which which is. Not his problem, but it's certainly not something that Chelsea uh, created. Uh, other than that, it's difficult to see. And I was looking at Chelsea cutting this Middlesbrough team open tonight with this. I was going, I'm going to see some football here. They're going to, Middlesbrough are going to be chasing the ball around. They can't get close to anybody. Chelsea will be popping it around with pace, showing them who the boss is. And, and we never really saw any of that. And listen, Pochettino, he must be delighted he's got a note at the end of his name. And he's some sort of fancy manager that has been, oh, I've been at PSG. Oh, Tottenham, that was great for a period before it all went wrong. Because I tell you what, if his name was little old Graham Potter, right, trust me, they would be absolutely dragging him through the coals right now. Now, they might be, I, I don't know, I presume, I presume not as much. Because Graham Potter, right, this team is no better than it was last year, right? It's probably worse. And yet Graham Potter was absolutely lambasted because this job's too big for him. He can only manage Brighton. This job's too big and they can't do this and they can't do that and we need somebody else. And Pochettino comes in and it's early, I got relatively early. What's changed? Not a lot. Got a fancier Nothing. manager. He's worked with a few bigger players. Mm. Results are kind of the same. So what, what does it need? Guess what it needs? They need to go and spend again. They do. Yeah. Because they've spent badly. And they need to go and they're gonna to have to go and spend again because what they have got is not gonna be good enough. Frank. Yeah, it, it, it's um... Uh, I'll go back to the beginning of the discussion of the monologue, the big, nice monologue of Craig Burley. But what, what, what he said at first was very, very important about the fact that they created two chances because of Middlesbrough. And I want to go to Pochettino. And, uh, and, and again, uh, Craig mentioned it. I want to know what they do at training session. Because it's, uh, for me, it seems to be that the only goal for them is to keep the ball and to not lose the ball without trying something maybe risky. A little bit of, of, of that. 
It's like you're going to be rewarded if you do 100 passes. So they did 600. They must be very happy. They did nothing with that. They don't know how to take on players. Apart from Madueke today a little bit, but I go back to him at the end of my, uh, uh, my explanation. They don't know how to cross the ball. They don't know how to uh, play one-twos and, 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 uh, and pace up the game. And uh, when they have some chances to, do, to, to go for it, they go back. Because it's like, oh, the coach told me, told me to not lose the ball and to not risk anything. I don't know. Maybe it's that. Madueke, at one point, and I texted Shaka and Craig about that, he made a cross where we could see that w there was no Chelsea player in a 16-yard box. But he made it. And I said, well, I, the last time I saw that, I was 14 years old in my village where you don't know what to do with the ball, then you cross it and you don't care about it. The guy is a professional player. The, it means that he crosses by instinct. He doesn't know what he does. He doesn't inform himself about what he has to do. That's absolutely appalling. And it's not only Madueke. They're all the same. They don't know when to cross, how to cross it. It's, it's amazing. Again, they need, as, it's a fit, as Craig said, a real fit. Who's got more problems? This is, I know Man United won yesterday, but we said two big clubs here. Two big supposed managers. Y yeah, United in the fourth round of the uh, FA Cup. Who's got more? You would have said Eric Ten Hag's got more problems, right? Is this... uh, who's got more problems of Ten Hag and Pochettino? Yeah. But you would have said Ten Hag because it was all bundling and crashing around them and then you know, they get the odd result. But I, I, I don't know. I, I, think, Ch I think Chelsea's are spiralling worse. In that, and, and to your point, for, for Chelsea to fix this, they need to spend money. Um, the issue is, the, the issue is, if I'm managing a football club and I have a player that Chelsea want, I know I can just leak a story that Arsenal and Liverpool are interested and I can bump my price up by 40 million. And then, you were touching on this before, before, the, before the game, Craig, for all those players, for all the money that's spent, you cannot, you will not recover if you decide if you decide to sell players at any point. You will not get, what was it, 80 million for, for Mudrik. You will not get your money back for Kai Shido. Um, so then you have to offload the money cheap. You end, up pick, you end up picking up a percentage of their wages and you find yourself in, in the same situation that Manchester United are. A lot of money invested in players that you simply do not know what to do with. And, 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 and it just spirals to the point now we're talking about Manchester United unable to go into the transfer market, unable to, to match um, bids, bids of, of other football clubs. Who, who would have thought we'd been having that conversation 10 years ago? And I think Chelsea are heading exact. They aren't there yet, but I, it's, it's a slippery slope. Chelsea have been... Chelsea tried to... Uh, this, this ownership, right, but Todd Bowley and his cronies and all the direct football, sporting directors and all that, they've tried to bake a cake, right? That's what they've tried to do. They've tried to bake a cake, but they've got all the ingredients and they've just like chucked it all in at once. And they've sat back and go, <laughs> they've sat back and gone, oh, that's not a very good cake, is it? <laughs> it's like they've just thrown everything at it at once and then said, they've said to the managers and the coaches, go on then, get on with it. And guess who'll take the, mm. guess who'll take the fall? Not, not ownership, not sporting directors, not people that are out there signing players, it'll be probably another manager at some point if he doesn't turn this round. Nadam, are the guys being harsh on Chelsea? <laughs> yeah, maybe, but the fact is they see a lot of them and they've spoken about them for a long time and I think as they look at them through sort of a more narrow lens, I would say. You know, they watch a lot of football from them, they see certain people underperforming, they see people seem like they're trending in the right direction and then falling off the, off the face of the earth. So I think it's fair in terms of what they're saying from their perspective. I think bigger picture, maybe they have had positives, but as Craig was saying there with the cake analogy, you would expect it to be something else. But for me, if we're going to use that analogy, it's almost like they've got a whole mix of ingredients for all different cakes trying to make one cake make sense. Like it doesn't really add up. I think at times you've got <laughs> players who seem to be doing something good, but then the partnerships aren't there to marry up with somebody else. You know, one time you seem like, oh, they look really good in, in attack, but then they look back at bad in defence and vice versa. It's this very, very strange situation to be in. And I said before the show as well, I'm somebody who's perhaps guilty of just believing that I'm just that bit too much. And that's not necessarily gone away because I still think they'll win the second leg. But, you know, as we look at it, and I think the guys are right, it tends to be spiralling because a few weeks ago we asked the question, would you rather be in this dressing room 
or in the United one, and I think most of us said this one, but as every week passes, this looks like just that little bit more bleak, I'd have to say. So just to stay with this analogy then. Well, I know one thing, Kay, and now, sorry, oh, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. You, I'm, you yeah. made me th think about but the There are cakes, too many in my head so now, don't start me right off. Now. It's not been a cakewalk for them, has it? Well, I think, you, well, I think you're taking the cake, aren't you? <laughs> asking, well, you can't always have your cake yeah. and eat it, Craig. Oh, well, I, I think, well, I think you're taking the cake, asking Nathan if we've been harsh on Chelsea. We're not talking about Burnley Football Club here. We're not talking about Wolverhampton yeah. Wanderers. We're not talking about, you know, somebody down the bottom half of the Premier League. We're talking about... A, a juggernaut that's had X amount of success in the last 25 to 30 years in particular, having the lure of West London for players to go and live in, having almost a bottomless pit of money to go and attract these players and overpay, overpay for them and give them too long of contracts, but that's not my Pay part of the discussion. Dough. So, what? Too much okay, so you don't encourage a crazy so, There is no words. <laughs> there are no words that are too harsh on what we are seeing from this Chelsea side. From other sides that don't have the resources or the clout or the so called talent, then yeah, we'll give them, and I'll certainly give a lot of these teams, particularly with the youngsters, I'll give them a lot of leeway. A lot of leeway. But when I see this at the top, I'm not having excuses. I'm not having excuses. What's happening at this football club and one or two others is unacceptable and we have to scrutinise it and we have to analyse it and this is just not a well-run outfit. Full stop. Well, let's hear from Mauricio Pacchettino speaking after the game. He spoke to Alexis Nunes. Mauricio, I know that was a tough result to take, um, but this is a two-legged semi-final. How do you rally the boys, I suppose, for the next one and what did you feel you were missing today with so many chances? Yeah, it's good. I think we miss a score. In football, if you don't score, it's difficult to win. We create too many chances, but what we can explain, we cannot say too much because if you, if you don't score, it's difficult after to explain the, the performance. The performance, I think overall, I think we were better side, but on the end, they fight and they, when they, um, you know, got the opportunity and they score, I think we made some, some mistakes that we were punished. And we cannot after uh, to to score. Um, yes, now we have 90 minutes on start for reaching 15 days. Well, similar to the last match against Preston, it was quite hard to break down when they, you know, bunker down and make it difficult. What do you feel is is missing that cutting edge? Well, I think this is what uh, what is going on during this uh, during this season. I think we create too many chances. Like we are uh, one of the best team creating chances, but after we are not clinical enough on the last third, that is what is. Why we are in this in the situation that maybe on the table on the Premier League because uh, we are not scoring the goal that we deserve to score. Y últimamente en español solo para saber tu opinión del esfuerzo de tus jugadores y también qué podemos esperar del próximo partido en Stamford Bridge. Bueno, so he's had to say that in English. Oh, yeah. Well, well I, was, I was looking forward to Spanish, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's, I could, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. We're we're better than them. Tell me something I don't know. Uh, uh, my criticism is, you know, we we're a good chance, we're a good team at creating chances. I mean, that is such an empty statement. Uh, the, the, you could count the chances that Chelsea created on, on one hand uh, against Middlesbrough. Greatest respect to Middlesbrough. Okay. We could count the chances that they created, and even those where in, in the first half where, where, where Palmer missed that were gifted to, to Chelsea, it, it wasn't as a result of Chelsea's pressing. It, it was just uh, it was a result of of Chelsea's sloppiness defensively and a goalkeeping error for, for, for the, the second one. Um, then, yes, yes, they had the late Palmer chance after that, and then Brozier and, and Gallagher created good opportunities, but didn't test Glover in, in, in any capacity. So I, I don't understand why, I don't understand how, well, we are creating chances is, is an explanation or an, an appeasement for, for what, you what you just witnessed. You, you, you didn't carve Middlesbrough apart. And, and give Middlesbrough their credit. They bunkered down, and once they settled into the game, they were difficult to, they were difficult to break down. Well, diff difficult for this Chelsea to break down. So give Middlesbrough their credit. But I, I'm not having this, well, we create so many chances, we just can't put it away. That's, that's not what I saw. He's, been, he's obviously been at the Mikel Arteta School of Claptrap. 
isn't he? Which is what we're see what we're hearing at the moment from him, because he's a, he's he's in the same he's riding the same horse off the back of the uh, Liverpool game and others when he's saying, oh my God, no. we should be, we should be winning these games five and six now. Craig. Actually, when you looked at it and we did look at it yesterday, for those that watched, if you didn't watch, you can go back and find it somewhere. No idea where. Is Alisson was throwing his cap, throwing his cap on these strikes, and then we looked at the uh, the expected goals which the boys took the mickey out of me yesterday for, <laughs> I must admit. And actually, it's all baloney, really. They're just, they're just above Premier League average. And Shaq is right. They did have some chances. Some were handed to them. One or two they created. But it's not like Middlesbrough or any other teams that they've played recently are absolutely hanging on by their fingernails. They were not. That being said, 90 minutes at Stamford Bridge is... It's a different story for Middlesbrough to be able to do it again. We, we, we'll find out if they can. But put it one way, if he fails to get this team through these two games, I, I don't know what excuse he would use because we just can't score goals isn't an excuse for losing over 180 minutes to a mid-table championship side if that's what happens. So let's go full circle. Frank started by saying there was nothing constructive he could say really about Chelsea after today's performance. What can you say constructive from what you saw pitch side, Nadem, that they can carry with them into the second leg? Um, I could say that just behind me now, they're all working really hard to get ready for the next game. Um, I could say that... Um, <laughs> No, I think I think it's Craig run saying the second run. the second leg at Stamford Bridge is going to be a different it's going to be a different different game altogether. I think the pressure that sort of those Middlesbrough players will be under it will take a lot of character and a lot of ability to be able to handle that situation. And I think as uh, as Pochettino was saying, this side did create chances, and I know it triggers the guys so much on the show, and I love it when I'm on and the trigger when a manager <laughs> says we created chances, but. The fact is they did, and they'll probably create more in the second game. And as a consequence, I would be very surprised if they weren't in the final come the end of the month. Go ahead, Frank. I, I, I don't think the, the I don't think the, the I think it's a language barrier that uh, that Pochettino just said. Uh, I think he wanted to say opportunities instead of chances. <laughs> I think I think because he didn't create, they had the opportunity of score of scoring goals, not because of the, of themselves, but because of the others, because of Boro. Uh, and the mistake that they made, that's it. But really, as everybody, everybody explained, it's not enough. Running is not enough. Sprinting is not enough. You don't have, if you don't have an, an idea of what you want to do, a tactic, a plan, there is no plan. It's like, yeah, we keep the ball and we don't know what to do. So I'm kind of optimistic about the, the, the second tie and the fact they're going to play at Stamford Bridge. But I'm not that crazy optimistic because Borough, as Craig uh, uh, Ashaka explained, they played very well at the back. Uh, they, they didn't put the bus, but almost, and they were very clever on what they had to do. And Chelsea didn't create again anything. So it can happen again. Do you think there's something in the air at Middlesbrough, by the way? You think there's some sort of something's whiffing around there behind Nadem, where is he? That's the only place you're going to get some constructive, <laughs> popular, he, he and can positive. Go to the Riverside every week if he likes. I don't <laughs> is, there, is there some sort of positive? <laughs> is there some sort of positivity in the tea side air behind him there? Not Whereas we sit here and go, "No, oh, he's a nice guy. Chelsea he's just a nice guy. Let's That's go it. to let's go to near him. He's definitely got some constructive to say. <laughs> we need devil's advocate. Chelsea. What? We need devil's advocate. We're just trying to balance can, things out. How can here. you be devil's advocate with this today? Tell well, me. The, the, I'm the, off my chair here with the, the only thing positive you can say is that <laughs> this tie is, is a long way from death, of course. Yes. Right? As, as you would And I, they're very close to a right. That's not positive. Well, oh, That's just fact. If, if it was supposed to be dead, it, it should be dead in, in Chelsea's favour, so, so to speak. And we all expect Chelsea at Stamford Bridge to come back and, and, and overturn this. And then finals are things that are less about tactics and, and personnel and more about grit. So maybe, maybe somehow Chelsea turns this, turns this all on its head. Um, but <laughs> maybe if I, I tell you what, if I stand over Where here, do you go? Where do you go? <laughs> if I stand over here, right now, shout over to me. Ask me if I get anything positive to say. You got anything positive? positive to say, Craig? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to talk about the semi-final <laughs> right, then. Okay.